Hello, Tom again. Uh, our next task in this exercise is to create a, a data structure or a struct called grade stats. Um, so uh, this is going to include uh, it, all, all the elements of the grade stats uh, structure will be double, uh, correction, uh, will be public. One of them will be a double to hold the average grade uh, once we calculate it. And then there's going to be three integers, one for the uh, count or the number of passing grades one for the number of failures, and one for the number of uh, invalid marks. Um, so let's uh, implement this uh, in our code. Um, I could define the structure inside a class program, or I could define it uh, separately like uh, I have here. Uh, I've decided to define it outside a class program. Uh, it, it's really six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, I've started off with a little bit of a summary comment to document what I'm doing, and then it's basically just struck uh, the name of the structure, uh, open brace, closing brace, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, structures are very similar uh, in C Sharp as, as what you're familiar with already in C++. Uh, there are some subtle, subtle differences in C Sharp in terms of how structures are in relation to uh, classes, but we'll talk more about that when we get to more in-depth discussion on classes. Um, so for now, we'll just def define the, uh, the four elements of the structure. Okay, so again, each of them are public. One of them's a double, and the other three are integers, and I've just given them each names. It's, it's a fairly simple, um, straightforward piece. So let's look at our next task. Um, the next task is to write one array processing method called calculate grade stats. Um, this is going to take an array of doubles representing the marks as well as one of these uh, structures, grade stat structures, um, where we're going to actually put uh, the average pass count, fail count, and inv uh, invalid count. Okay, so um, and then of course the method returns the total number of grades processed. So the, the grade stat structure that we pass to it, this is where the answer is going to go. So we have to think about how we actually pass that in. Um, so let's move over to code. Okay, so we're back in our project, in our uh, program class. Um, perhaps we'll do it uh, here right underneath main. So we'll move everything else down a bit. So this is where we'll, we'll put it. So I have some documentation comments here the fact that it processes an array of marks to determine some basic summary statistics or descriptive statistics. Uh, I talk about what the uh, two parameters are and what it returns. So it's a public method. Uh, it Again, it's static, uh, similar to our other method. In this case, it returns an integer, the number of grades, total number of grades processed. It's called calculate grade stats. It doesn't like that right now because it says it returns an integer and doesn't yet. I can make that temporarily go away I'm just putting a return zero in there oh it's not even gonna let me do that it's just a different error anyways I'll just ignore that for now um, here's my array okay so an array coming in called marks and here's my grade stats uh, structure which I've just called stats now the the uh, way that I'm passing that in is by using an out parameter. Okay, and I think we'll we'll end up talking about this in class a little bit. But in in C++ we had uh, you know pass by value, which is the default. Same in C sharp, we had pass by uh, memory address explicitly, um, which is not available in C C sharp. That's a C++ and C only thing. But um, and then we had pass by reference, which we were familiar with. So in C sharp, there's pass by value as well, uh, also pass by reference, and then there's this uh, third one, uh, pass out. Um, an output parameter is basically we would use a reference parameter for this in C++, but it's basically when we are uh, sending something to a method that uh, you know the processing that's going on inside the method, we want to set what that parameter is. Okay, so it's kind of like a way of getting data or information out of the method uh, other than using the return value. And that's exactly what we want to do. Um, again, in C++, we would sort of use a reference by reference to um, 
accomplish the same thing. In C sharp, the difference between uh, ref and out is that uh, ref is usually typically reserved for when you want to do both kind of like reading some data in and potentially modifying it to get it out. Um, whereas output, it's not necessarily uh, important what um, what this structure in this particular case or whatever variable you're passing to it, it doesn't necessarily matter what it currently holds. Um, that's sort of the idea. So as a result, you know, it, it's not important whether the stats um, data structure was actually initialized or not before we sent this in, and it won't complain about that. If it were by reference, it might complain about uh, the fact that stats wasn't initialized uh, before we sent it. At any rate, I digress. That's what an output parameter is for. So let's uh, look at uh, uh, doing the actual logic of this method. So I'm going to start off with some declarations. Uh, first, my constants, a minimum grade, a maximum grade, uh, as well as a passing grade, because passing grade might not always be 50. Okay, So I may want to be able to, to change that and recompile the program if I need to. Um, so I've defined those as constants. Um, I have a double called total valid, which is going to be an accumulator for all of the valid grades to calculate the average. It's like this. It's like a sum, okay? And then I also have a counter just to count the number of valid grades. All my other counters are going to come with the uh, uh, with the st grade stats structure coming in. Speaking of the grade stats uh, structure, um, if I'm going to do the uh, this properly, what I want to make sure is that all of the different members of that have been initialized to zero. Okay, so uh, I'm taking the you know average grade, setting that to zero. That one might not have been important. The pass count, fail count, and in invalid count all need to be set to zero as well, because I'm going to be going through a loop and actually adding to uh, these counters. So. Um, it's important that they start off, start off at zero. Now, in terms of the processing, I only really want to proceed if I actually have marks to process. So it's possible that that array that I'm sending to the uh, to the method doesn't contain anything. So I take my marks array, which was a parameter dot length. If it's greater than zero, then I actually want to go ahead and do some processing. As long as there are marks, I want to go through each of them. So it's pretty handy for me to use a for each loop. Okay, so for each mark in the marks array. Okay. Now, of course, you could do this various different ways, but the question that I asked first is whether or not the grade was valid. Okay, so if the grade was valid, there were certain processing steps I was going to take. Specifically, um, Obviously, if it's in the right range, the mark is valid, so I'm adding it to the total valid accumulator uh, for calculating the average later on. Um, and then, basically, I have an if-else determine whether or not it's a, uh, whether the pass count goes up one or the fail count goes up by one. So if the mark is greater than or equal to the passing grade, which was 50, obviously pass count goes up by one. And the only other option in, in this particular case would be the fail count goes up uh, by one. Um, so there's an else that goes with that, okay, and, and that else would be that my um, invalid count uh, goes up by one, it, oops, goes up by one if it wasn't valid, okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out the average. Okay, I'm not going to do that in the actual uh, for each loop because that's an afterwards thing. Um, so uh, how I've calculated the average is I've simply uh, added the pass count and the fail count together to give me an overall valid count. Okay, because I'm only incorporating the valid grades in the average. And as long as the valid count is greater than zero, because I don't want to divide by zero error. That's important. I'm going to set the average grade in the uh, stat structure to the total valid, which I'm typecasting as a double because of you know inter integer arithmetic I want to avoid, divided by the valid count. So that should give me a proper average. Um, if the valid count, if there were no valid marks, the average grade would end up being zero from how I initialized it. The only uh, thing I need to do uh, that's left over is my final return value. 
So uh, you may recall that what I was supposed to return was the uh, number of marks processed. So I could say something like return valid count plus invalid count or something along those lines. Uh, but a, kind of a cheap way of doing it is simply returning marks.length because I've gone through and processed all these marks using this for each loop. So I'm, I'm relatively sure that that's the right uh, actual number. Okay. Um, so that basically is my calculate grade stats uh, method, which I probably should should test out. This might be a good time to pause the video if you need a chance to get caught up. So to test this out, I'm going to create an array with uh, five grades in it. So I'm from habit, I'm creating a constant uh, in main called number of grades and making equal to five. This happens to be how many grades the project ultimately will have. So this, this bit of code I'll actually leave in there. And then I declare an array. Declaring an array is slightly different syntax um, than in C sharp as it is in, in C++ and particularly the new keyword. Um, uh, ultimately, when I do this in the final project, I won't bother initializing it, but for now, uh, because I don't have any input phase, I'm just going to initialize it to these arbitrary marks that I've decided to test. Okay, so there's my, my actual array. Um, I also need to declare a, uh, just temporarily, a grade stats structure to hold the, uh, uh, to hold the answers. Okay, so uh, I've got grades is the actual grades. Stats will be where the uh, summary statistics is going to be uh, stored. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to, I'm not worried about my delegate stuff. I'm just going to leave that down at the bottom. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call my calculate grade stats method and uh, output the results of it. Okay, so it'll be a, a console write line, a little bit of formatted text here. I'm going to say the number of process because you'll remember that what the grade stats, uh, calculate grade stats method does is it returns the number of grades that were processed. Um, I'm going to call the method, I'm going to pass it grades, which is the array, and stats, which is an output parameter, so out stats, that's where the answers are going to go. So this should, if everything works out, should return 5, so number of processed is 5. Now I want to see the other stuff as well, so I'm, I'm just going to go through a series of, of uh, console write lines, and, um, um, oops, We'll see if these these values sort of make sense based on uh, what I've actually uh, put in here. So we'll hit start. Okay, so there were five processed. That makes sense. The number of passes is three. Quick scan of the actual numbers. That makes sense. There was one failing mark, uh, one invalid mark, negative 5.5. And then the average was 63.825. So I'd, I'd have to actually do the, do, do the math to check this, but that should only be the average of those four. Um, so I could desk check that. All right, so I'm reasonably happy how this is working so far. So I'm just going to get rid of the code that I don't need. Okay, so the console write lines I don't need. Um, the grade stats, that was just a temporary thing. I'll delete that. And then um, for the actual array, I'm just going to delete the uh, initializers there so um, because that's ultimately uh, what I'm left with, just declaring the array and dealing with the delegate and all that good stuff. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll uh, create our method for displaying the report um, as well as uh, polish up main here to uh, put it all together.